Yeah, you know, I told the guys if we won, this is a few weeks ago, if we won the ACC tournament championship, they could do it because they're, you know, all of our guys are braiding their hair and doing things with the hair. And they says, Coach, we need to braid your hair. I say, ah, if we win the ACC tournament championship, you can do what you want with my hair. But I'm a man of my word. So I, I have to, if that's what they want to do, that's what we'll do. I'm going to try to convince them to say, hey, guys, let's get through the tournament. How can I, I'm going to, let, 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 I'd rather keep my hair as it is. Maybe I'll say it's been a good luck charm. We've won eight in a row. I haven't got a haircut. Uh, how can I bribe you another way? How about, because I'm going to get your rings for winning an ACC tournament. I'm going to get your rings. Can I get you an extra ice cream bar? Can I get you, you know, an extra, you know, a D, a, a, a Adidas Georgia Tech polo? What can I do in exchange for maybe waiting until after the tournament? But we'll see. It's 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 their call. It's 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 their team. I'm just kind of oversee it. It's their team. So whatever they want to do, they can do. Mm. We don't want no stinking ice cream bar. <laughs> Tell him, <Right>. Michael. Hey, <laughs> wait, wait, I want an ice cream bar. I'll go buy me an ice cream bar. That, no, no, the hair, right? It's all about the hair. For sure, man. That's funny. First of all, congratulations. So, that uh, was an incredible team win. And you know, we were kidding around during the break here uh, with everything that every student athlete's been through this year. Uh, if you're fortunate, fortunate enough or lucky enough to be in a position to win a title on top of it, makes it all worthwhile. But uh, that was just an incredible team effort across the board. So congratulations. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Michael, I, I want to get into a couple things here. One, uh, how you guys doing? Y'all have been on the road since uh, a week ago Thursday. So if I'm counting right, this is like day 11, day 12 on the road here. Uh, how's that been? And uh, are you still in Greensboro? Have you gone to Indiana? Kind of take it. I think people are starting to get a little curious as to how all this is working for these basketball teams. Uh, right now, we actually, we just got into Indiana last night. So um, for us, I mean, um, this is what it takes for us to play um, in this year, this, this whole COVID year and all the things that's been going on. I mean, for us, it's... Um, it's been a lot. So um, right now we just uh, we've been in hotels, traveling a lot, and, and just um, staying in the hotels and not really seeing anybody, being so, in our own bubble. Yeah, I mean, but does it get boring now? Moses claimed to us last week when he won Player of the Year he was bored. Now I, I, Moses strikes me as a different cat anyway, but that's another story. <laughs> Yes. I mean, uh, for us, I mean, it's just finding your own time to do things. I mean, as far as like watching TV shows or watching movies or catching up on homework for us. Um, so, I mean, uh, there's a couple of things that you can do, but it is boring. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> i tell you what wasn't boring was that celebration on the floor and uh, watching Jose dive through those balloons. I mentioned earlier that that's that was the definition of pure joy and you know, only you guys know what you've been through. And that's true for any team. I don't care what the gender, what the sport uh, during this pandemic. Uh, my guy, have you had any time to reflect? I mean, you got some downtime per se, but do you look back at it and go, holy mackerel, remember a time when we were 0-2 and, and had lost to Mercer, Mercer in Georgia State? Mm. And here we are cutting down the nets and partying like rock stars on the floor and balloons and confetti are falling. It's amazing your journey this year. Um, this is something that we will remember for the rest of our lives. I mean, this was a great accomplishment. This is something that we set forth um, since we've been here. Um, it's been a goal of ours. And um, for us to accomplish something like this, it's uh, it's unreal. I mean, especially where we started and how, how the season started off. And it's just, it's it's, it's unreal, man. I, I couldn't even put it in describe how my emotions were and, and still how they are. But um, as far as us right now, our goal still remains to win that um, NCAA championship. So. Um, our seasons continue, and uh, we just got to keep getting better and um, keep winning games. You know, Michael, here's the interesting thing, and I tweeted this out after the ball game the other night. Uh, when you were named the winner of the Everett Case Award, you became the 15th player in the history of the tournament to be named the tournament's most outstanding player and yet not make an all-ACC team the same season. Uh, now I know you said after the game that, yeah, that, that means something that, you know, I, I think I'm a good player. I think I've gotten better, all those things, but you join a list of Joel Berry in 2016, Jerry Stackhouse, by the way, in 1994 did not make all ACC and was the MVP of the tournament. 
And maybe, maybe more importantly than anybody else, the last time Georgia Tech won the ACC tournament, a player who was not all ACC was the MVP of the tournament, and that was James Forrest, who I know still comes to a lot of games and is around the program on a regular basis. How does that make you feel? Um, people ask me that all the time. I mean, it's 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 huge for me. Um, I mean, I felt like I've been disrespected in those ACC selections and all that type of stuff. But um, for me, the thing that, that I came out with this in this tournament was just like a chip on my shoulder. Um, it's something that I woke up the following day and say, hey, man, this is something that I got to show these people. I got to show the world that that I deserve something. So um, for us, I mean, it was mm. to win that ACC tournament and um, just come out there and play the right way and play the way that I know that I'm capable of. So that's what I did. Michael, speaking of disrespected, uh, and I know you still have to be euphoric after winning the ACC title on Saturday, but what would you think of a nine spot for Georgia Tech after what you guys accomplished mm. by the NCAA selection committee? Um, I'm not. I'm not really going to get into that. I mean, um, for us, we're we're just happy that we mm. we've made the tournament. Um, for us, that was a goal of ours. Um, that's what coach all we all talked about. So for us, I mean. We're just happy to be in the tournament. So now they, they put us in, and now it's for time for us to shock the world. Yeah. It's almost like you guys, and, and you can probably speak to this as well as any of the other veteran guys, uh, it's almost like this is finally now, you, you've put all the hard work into it. You kind of personify what Josh Pastner has done from a recruiting standpoint, and you don't want to let it go. You guys don't want this to end, I'm guessing, right? Not at all. I mean – this is something that we've worked for since we were freshmen and since, I mean, we're a whole veteran team. So um, for us, this is an accomplishment that we, we want to keep going. Um, I mean, it's something that we, we look forward to as we were growing up as kids as being in the, in the NCAA tournament, um, watching those videos, watching the games growing up. Man, it's something that is so exciting that you would just want to be a part of. So, Mike, you know what else is crazy? It is, and again, we have a better opportunity to reflect on everybody's schedule and, and journey, but you guys yeah. are in the midst of, of it, so sometimes it doesn't make sense because you're still so focused. But I look back at your season. I mentioned, you know, you guys getting off to a lousy start and thinking, yikes, we got to get this thing straightened out ASAP. And I go back to that loss at Clemson in February where it really was a game you should have won. You know, Jose makes two free throws. He never misses free throws. He misses two, and next thing you know, it's a bank shot, and you're getting back on the bus going home going, how in the world did we lose that game? Well, you know what? You guys haven't lost since. Uh, and it's amazing the highs and the lows that this team, and really almost every team, has gone through. But you guys in particular, given the rugged start, some unbelievably tough losses, COVID pauses, and now, ta-da, eight games in a row. We're cutting down nets. I still got confetti in my hair. We're a nine seed. You could use that chip on shoulder. It's amazing the highs and lows that you've been through this year. I mean, it just shows you how, how there's so many highs and lows in basketball. I mean, um, for us, it, it was just, hey, we, we have a job to do, and this is something that we wanted to accomplish. So, hey, for us, it's, it's to win these games. So, for that last stretch, um, we had a great stretch also my sophomore year at the end of the season as well. So, for us was um, keep getting better, um, keep listening to the coaches, keep watching film, and um, just keep getting better. So for us, we just won those type of games, and we knew that we needed to to be able to accomplish something that we wanted to do. Hmm. All right, let's get to the uh, let's get to the matter then. What's the deal with Pastors? What are y'all going to do? Are you going to hold him to it? Is is the hair going to get braided before you play? What's what's happening here? I, he, he, you know, he's stereotypical with this type of things like that. So, I mean, for him, I don't know if he wants to do that because he's going to think of it as a good luck charm that his hair wasn't done and all that type of stuff. And then we kept winning without his hair being done. So, but I'm, I'm going to be one of the guys that, that, that emphasizes of him getting his hair done. So I, I'm going to be one of those. You can- <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Let, let me ask this. Uh, and we spend, in my opinion with him, we spend a little too much time on the hair. We need to really be talking about these sideburns that have become like a continent or a peninsula. We need to fix that, Mike. Come on, let's be honest. I, I told him that, man, but I, I kind of like it. It goes into the hair with a little curl, man. It's something that, man, Coach Passner is the only guy that I see out here rocking it. So, man, I'm proud of him. He's different, and that's one of our slogans is built different. So, <laughs> Yeah, it looks right. like the state of Florida right. is going down as uh, – down his chin, right? I mean, just, I mean, I, those things keep yeah. growing like, uh, 
I don't know, like Chia Pet. I don't know what that thing is right there. But nevertheless, I know this much, though, Mike. You guys got the belt. You know what? And I told you before this thing started, they can't take that away from you. You know what? Eight seed, nine nope. seed, one seed, 16 seed, whatever. We're in the dance. We got a chance. And you will always be an ACC champion. And that's got to feel great. Feels amazing. Um, like I said, man, it's something that we all – and dreamed about something that we all thought about during the beginning of the season. So for us, man, it's just, it's huge. Yeah. Hey, uh, congratulations. Uh, looking forward to watching you guys this week in the NCAA tournament. Hope it's not too bad in Indianapolis. Just hang in there. Uh, it's worth it, right? You get to play ball. That's the, that's the back end of the deal. So thanks again. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much.